Hey, I'm Max. I got my AB diploma last year and currently I'm studying aerospace engineering at TU Delft. And I asked some friends that got more than 40 points in the IB, some from high school, some here at uni, how they did so well and what their top tips are. And exactly these I'm going to present in this video. So let's get started with tip number one, which is to start early. If you're about to start your IB journey, then definitely get a head start on basically everything by, for example, watching this video or get familiar with how the grading works exactly what you have to deliver in the next two years and if you already are in the IB you can definitely always get a head start on your extended essay and on your IA. What you can already do is decide on the topics or brainstorm the topics that you might want to do for your IA and your EE and then once that process actually starts you can always fall back on that brainstorm so that you don't start off with a blank page. Also get your CAS project out of the way as soon as possible. I know people who left it to the last minute and they were incredibly stressed and also lost time to study for the final exams, which is where the bulk of your marks come from. I think in most subjects, the exams are worth about 60 to 80 percent. So definitely, definitely get your CAS project done as soon as possible and definitely do it with a friend. It's just way more fun. I did the homecoming ball in October of my first year in the IB. That was a huge relief since I didn't have to worry about that for the next one and a half years. Okay, the second tip might sound a bit generic, but it's to stay organized. Everyone I've asked said, you have to definitely be organized. Now, it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you're effective and that you do it. Personally, I use the Reminder and Calendar app from Apple. In the Reminders, I would always have two like brackets, one for every day, so what I have to get done every day. So at the beginning of the day or the night before, I would write down everything I need to get done in that day. And the other one is to keep track of everything else that is coming up. For example, potential EE deadlines, IA deadlines, and exams, for example, in three weeks down the line. And in the calendar, I would also just chuck all my deadlines so I have an overview of what is coming up in for example, the next couple of months. And this is especially important during exams when you really have to prioritize things. It's just to keep organized and have a way to stay organized in order to maximize your exam results. Okay, tip number three is that the IB program is a marathon and not a sprint. You're going to be very motivated at the beginning of your first year in the IB, but that is gonna definitely deteriorate in maybe two, three, or even four months, but you just have to persevere and keep working. There, there is no other way. The IB is a hard program, but if you put in the work, you can definitely achieve your goals. So even if you don't feel like it, you just have to get your work done. I was never really excited to, I don't know, for example, sit down and work on my English oral, but I did it anyway. And always keep in mind that in the future, you will never really remember how much work you put in, but what will remain are your results. So you won't remember if you actually watched Netflix on that day or if you worked, but what will stay forever are the results you Taint. So it's up to you if you want to live with regrets or not. My tip number four is don't waste your time, be effective. You definitely have to learn how to learn because I think that's something that's not generally taught at schools. So before you go into the IB or even right now, learn how to learn. There are more effective study techniques than others. Down below, I have some techniques linked. Keywords are active recall and spaced repetition. At least these two have never failed me. And also figure out what works for you as soon as possible. Because the earlier you know what works for you, the earlier you can implement it and the earlier you can stop wasting time. Okay, tip number five is gonna concern IAs and the E's and basically everything to do with coursework. So the first thing is that if you are starting a blank page, never try to write the perfect sentence first try. It's just not gonna happen. Just write something and you can always edit it later because there's no way you're gonna write the perfect sentence first try, but if you write something, at least you have something to work with. Then also treat the rubric like a checklist and do everything according to that rubric. So before you even start writing your EE or your IA, have a look at the rubric, understand it, ask your teachers what exactly does the rubric want from you, and then start your process of planning and actually writing your coursework because you can be as bad as you want in subject X, but if you understand the rubric and what it wants from you, and if you deliver on that rubric, then you will get a good grade. So look at the rubric, treat it as a checklist, and then your assignment is only finished once you've done everything the rubric asks. Now, for your extended essay, really do a subject you do enjoy because some people take the road of oh in subject x it's easier to get an a for example i think the saying was it's easier to get an a in like the languages but spending 40 hours on something that you do enjoy feels like less time than spending 20 hours or 30 hours on things that you don't enjoy so really take a subject that you enjoy i did my e in chemistry and i really 
really enjoyed it. I liked doing the experiments and I also liked writing it up in the end and doing the research for the theory behind it. But I would have hated to do it in the languages because it's just of no interest to me. So definitely choose a subject you enjoy for your EE, even if it is a bit harder. Also, you're probably gonna go into a career with the subject you enjoy. And if you do AE in that subject, then the stuff you will learn is more likely to show up again and you can more likely apply it in the future rather than doing a subject that you don't enjoy and you're not gonna have to do anything with it in the future and the skills you learned over there are going to be wasted. Okay, tip number six is to create a balance. Get a tight sleep schedule, especially during exam season, so that you have enough energy and that the stuff you learned is actually retained. Because facts and concepts actually solidify and stay in a memory whilst we're sleeping. So definitely get your sleep together. And also take breaks and exercise. This is important for your mental health and physical health, which both affect how you learn and how you understand things, which then directly affects your exam results. So don't think that by studying 24 seven, you'll get anywhere. Take breaks, chill with your friends. It's also important that you stay organized and that you can manage your time effectively. Oh, and also a little tip from my side, open your window, you probably think a teenager and it's really better for your body and your brain to breathe in fresh air rather than the air of you just sitting in your room for three days straight and not opening your window. Okay, tip number seven is to learn how to prioritize and then prioritize effectively. What I mean by that is to develop the skill or just to evaluate uh, how important the current task we're working on is. During the year, definitely prioritize coursework, so IAs and EEs, over in-class tests because these tests don't count towards your final IB grade, but the coursework does. So definitely, if you have to prioritize, choose the coursework over the tests. But here, be careful because your in-class tests may affect your printed grades and then these effects the opportunities universities will give you. Also, in terms of prioritizing, when you're studying for exams, work on the things you're actually bad at, your weaknesses, because there's no point in doing the stuff that you can already do. Work on the stuff that's hard and then get better at it so that then overall you're better at more things than just at the things you could already do at the beginning. Tip number eight is to never hesitate to ask for help. There is no downside in asking for help. The worst thing that can happen is that they can't or won't help you. That's it. But the upside is get your work done faster or you actually know what to do and maybe you just understand that certain concept better. There, there's literally no downside in asking for help. And here you can ask your classmates, teachers, or one of the best things that helped me is ask people that were already done with the IB or are one or two years older than I am, what they did and how they approached it. Okay, tip number nine is that after every day, review your notes and review what you did on that day. Make sure you understood the concepts that presented to you today and you can properly do and understand the problems that you did today. Moreover, do that at the end of the week as well. Just take an hour every Saturday or Sunday and look over all the stuff you've learned in that week. If there are some spots where you're like, oh, I actually didn't really understand that, definitely go over that because in the long run, this will increase your chances of the concepts and facts you learned during that week actually being in your long-term memory so that you don't have to cram at the end for your final exams. Okay, and tip number 10 is that do tons and tons of past papers. Past papers are the single most beneficial thing I did during my IB career, at least in my opinion and also in the opinions of many others. First of all, by doing past papers, you see what you can do and what you cannot do. So that you can then look at the stuff you cannot do and learn it. Secondly, it trains you to answer the questions in a way that the IB wants you to answer these questions. In the end, the IB is not testing you on how well you understand that subject, it's testing you on how well you can perform on their tests and answer their questions. So practice how they want their questions answered. And this is especially true because some of the questions that the IB has been asking for the last couple of years, they just show up again and again. And the last tip from my side is that remember that you're not the only one in this situation. There are your classmates around you and there are people all around the world who are going through the same things. You can always go on Reddit and read what other people are going through. Maybe that will make you feel better. And also the IB in the end really pays off at university because here I was already adjusted to the high workload and for my HL classes, that already went into great depth. I could already basically float through the first half or actually whole courses because I already learned that specific content. So trust me, persevere and it'll help you out in the long run. Also, try to enjoy. These are your last two years of high school and you're probably not gonna see most of the people that you're gonna be there with. So try to enjoy it. Okay, that's it for me. I wish you the best of luck on your IB journey. If you're taking physics in the IB and you're wondering how to perform well, click on this video. And if you're interested in what life looks like after the IB, click on this video. Video. And if you want to see more IB content, then definitely consider subscribing.